Hello, wanted to come uh, before you with uh, again some uh, helps uh, for prayer and uh, coming through scripture readings today. I just uh, presented out to you some of the, the words that uh, the word D, it begins with D, uh, <clears throat> very instrumental in leading for prayer, prayer times, uh, and especially to focus on our five areas that we had for the future, for our nation, for the church, family homes, and then our own personal hearts and others individuals. So those five areas I'm going to continue to maintain for an emphasis and a focus for the prayer targets. Um, coming off those D's which were pretty instrumental and directive uh, for prayer times coming again as I said through Bible readings this morning I had two other uh, really jumping out. The, the words that begin with the letter P uh, which I'll do later and then this today that I wanted to present to you here quickly the word H. Um, uh, this is the prayer of Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 6 through 8. Uh, coming through this passage again, chapter uh, 8 is the, the great prayer of Solomon as the temple was uh, completed. And Solomon makes these many sacrifices and he comes before the Lord and he makes this petition. Uh, numerous uh, numerous uh, petitions that he's asking for, futuristic uh, in a lot of way. Uh, that if anything would happen if judgments and the people would come back to him, uh, he's asking for these specific things for God to do. And this prayer, uh, again, is a very instructive prayer for us. There, there are numerous things that come out of this, and I've taught on this before, but today, the, the H words, uh, of about five, or, five of them that I want to bring to you today, uh, that you could have and to incorporate into your prayer times as well. Uh, so again, beginning in this, we, we start in chapter 8, and we come through these verses uh, back in chapter 7, uh, verse 50, uh, and then into chapter 8, where Solomon is beginning this to set, set everything before he offers the prayer. And we read this phrase in verses uh, 6, 8, and 10 of chapter 8, verse chapter 7, verse 50, this holy place. Now again, this is the, this is the temple. This is where God's glory Shekinah has not come down yet, but it does here in the next couple verses that when he offered the sacrifice, uh, it says, and God's glory descended. Uh, for, I think uh, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles has a better uh, in, uh, wording of that, but again, it's the same emphasis that we pray. Wherever God exists, because God is holy, uh, we read that same prayer initiative, be ye holy for I am holy. The highest standard as a Christian. And again, we pray this. Uh, we are so far from holiness. Our nation is so unholy. The church is not at a level of holiness. Um, you know, Tozer wrote that. He said that he believed the church was more interested in being happy than being holy. Um, and it's still the same, same uh, initiative 50 years later. Uh, but this is our focus. A Christian desires to be like their Heavenly Father, to be like our Savior, and to be like the Holy Spirit, holy. And so that emphasis, they are on a holy place. Moses, uh, when he went up to see the burning bush, the word that came to him, take your shoes off, you're on holy ground. Uh, this is a holy place. Wherever the body is gathered together, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am, it is holy. The word of God that we handle, it's a holy book, holy Bible. This is the word that came from God. And all that comes from God has his same characteristics, attributes, and essence, and that is his holiness. So our prayer uh, begins with that. Uh, the, as the old saying goes, as we pray for revival, and you draw that 18-inch circle, and you step inside, and you say, Holy Spirit, begin with me, right here. Make me holy. Um, uh, I don't hear a lot of prayers uh, in the prayer gatherings, groups, uh, writings that I read or sharing, but, but that is preeminent our priority for holiness, to be regained, to be maintained um, in, in this time and place of where we're at. So we see this uh, first call of H for our prayer uh, for holiness. Make it a holy place. Make me holy. Uh, cause my family. Now again, this is going to be that you're going to have to address the sin because holiness means void of sin without sin. Uh, and so that has to be dealt with the confession repentance for the church, for our family, for our nation, and what we're going into now for 2018. 
uh, but your first word, this is a holy place. So our striving, our prayers, our, our petitions, supplications, is to ma maintain them and to obtain that. Uh, make us holy. Be holy. Continue holiness in the body of Christ and the likeness of Christ. The second word that we read is, is that as Solomon begins to pray this, he uh, states, announces why he's doing this. And, and in verse uh, 16 through 18, we read this. He said, Since the day that I brought you forth, forth my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build a house that my name might be there. But I chose David. Uh, to be over my people Israel. And it was in the heart of David, verse 17 and 18, it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of our Lord God of Israel. And the Lord said unto David, my father, wherefore it was in your heart to build a house unto my name, <clears throat> uh, that it was well, that it was in your heart. So the second H word there is heart. And again, this, these, these words build off of each other. If you're going to have a desire, a passion to be holy, our first word, that's going to be because God birthed a holy desire within you, in your heart. Jesus said, out of the heart proceeds these things. And again, he was mentioning, listing there the sins because the heart was evil. Uh, but here is our striving. Uh, let my heart be right with you, Lord. Uh, let my heart desires not be anything of flesh, anything of this earth. Let it be heaven sent uh, in this. And if I am to be holy, it's going to be because my heart is right. It is good that it was in your heart, David. Uh, God is complimenting him. This is the man after God's own heart, David. And so that is a prayer of our own for ourselves. Uh, continue throughout 2018. Heart checks. I, I call us. Uh, myself in spiritual condition is a quack cardiologist. Um, There's so many people in the churches and family that has to go to the cardiologist, get EKGs, get uh, catheterizations, do uh, get uh, open heart surgery, stents. Uh, this is yearly that this has happened to someone that we know or pray for or care about. Uh, and spiritually, it's the same way. Uh, there has to be a continual daily, weekly uh, at the gatherings. Let's let's do a heart check. Uh, and see where we're at, uh, and that the Lord would be able to come to us and say, good that it was in your heart, uh, for, the, for the very spiritual di dis disciplines that take us to holiness. So the second word here that we're praying for is our heart condition. And again, if there is to be a revival, if there is to be a spiritual awakening in our nation, it's going to be because of a heart change. Uh, and that's what we have to pray towards for our nation. The church, uh, it, it cannot have a lukewarm heart uh, according to Revelation 3, I would that you were cold or hot, but because you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. So here is our second word, heart. And again, the, the example given here is David uh, and God blessing him for his heart condition that was in this. Um, the third word that we read about, and again, we go back to this of the holy place um, that, that we came from the beginning here is the house. Uh, and again, God complimenting David, as Solomon states it here, uh, that he wanted to build the Lord a house. Uh, he had been in a, in a uh, tent uh, from the days of Moses through the wilderness and coming on out. And we see today, we see the buildings, we see houses. Uh, we do Kaiser Church here in our house. Um, we read that in the book of Acts, that they gathered and they went house to house. Uh, we see that in other nations that uh, there's persecution and limitations by government laws, uh, that they have house churches. Uh, the United States will go back to that uh, because our religious freedom is, is, is on the fringe uh, with this. So, again, the house. Now, again, the, our, our fourth topic that we pray for, future, nation, church, family, home, uh, that's the house. Uh, the house conditions. Uh, that we see today. It becomes an emphasis of the church house. What, what is its condition of its heart and its, and its striving for holiness? Uh, what's my heart condition? Am I striving for holiness? Uh, but again, this house, uh, our tabernacle, um, do you not know that, that that body that you have is the house, the tabernacle of the Holy Ghost? Uh, and again, the striving in our homes uh, for family, for marriages, for 
uh, relationship for generation, three generations, grandparents, parents, children, grandchildren, uh, that they would be holy and have right hearts. So the house, and again, overall emphasis is the tabernacle, the temple that was built. Uh, but again, the spiritual context is for the church today, uh, the church house, as well as our personal family homes, uh, as well as our own tabernacle, uh, that again, we must pray for. Uh, these places, that they would be kept from evil, that they would be protected, they would be delivered, and God would meet them there with his Holy Spirit. Uh, so again, the, 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 the building of this holiness, heart, house, uh, all this is correlated here in chapter 8, uh, Solomon's prayer, where he's praying, what he's praying about, and what he's getting uh, pray for as far as the uh, petitions and supplications in the midst of that. And the last, last two are kind of a combination, but it's still um, uh, verse uh, 28. Uh, he, he said, whatever prayer, well, let me just read it. In verse 28, yet have respect unto their prayer of your servants to, to his supplications. O Lord my God, hearken uh, unto the cry and to the prayer which your servant prays before you today. So again, the petition, hear me, O God, hearken unto me uh, is Solomon's prayer here. He's getting ready to, to, to issue a prayer uh, of some desperate needs uh, of, of Israel that's going to be uh, in, in the rest of the Old Testament. Hearken unto me. And, and I couldn't help it as I was reading this and I thought um, one of the petitions is, is that if your servants are sent into captivity and they are in a strange land and they lift up their prayer uh, from their captivity towards this house, that you would hear them where they're at and forgive their sin and restore them. And you can't help but read Daniel chapter 9, uh, Ezra chapter 9, um, and, and not see the answer to that prayer that was here offered by Solomon. So again, you're talking uh, 400 years, 300 years, five, uh, Three, four hundred years there from from Solomon's time, a thousand BC. Daniel was five fifty BC. So uh, that's the time frame. You read this petition, "Hearken unto me." And again, we have so many of those verses that instructs us as we're praying for holiness. We're praying for the heart condition. We're praying for the houses. We're praying this uh, of all this, Lord. Give ear to me. Listen to me. Hearken to me, hear me, O oh God, and, and the fulfillment of that. Uh, one of the word phrase studies that I'm doing right now that I haven't got all done and all documented yet uh, is hear and see, uh, and God in the emphasis of that of God hearing us and seeing us. Uh, it, it is not, as I've said so often, uh, enough for God to hear me. Uh, you must hear me in order that you may answer me. Jeremiah 33:3. Uh, but again, if God doesn't hear us, and there are numerous examples of that in the Bible where God says, I will not hear you. Um, Psalm 66, probably one of the most that I quote, uh, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. He will not hearken unto me. Um, and so this is the prayer of Solomon. Hear, hearken unto me, O Lord, for the prayer and the petitions that I'm getting ready to offer. Uh, don't take it for granted. Uh, and again, too many do this. Well, I pray, I pray. They justify themselves. Well, I'm glad you pray. The Muslims pray. The Hindus pray. Does God hear them? Uh, there, are, there are billions of prayers that go up each day uh, across this world. But that does not mean that God hearkens unto them. And uh, so again, the understanding of this in our prayer, our, our supplications, intercessions, and petitions here is mandatory that we understand this. And Solomon states it. Lord, hearken unto your servant here. Um, and again, there's nothing wrong with us saying the same thing. Lord, I'm desiring to be holy. Desiring, again, in the, in the concept of my, my family, the church, the nation, the future. Make us holy. Make our hearts right. Cause these houses to be houses of holiness and places of right, righteousness in your sight. And hearken unto us uh, for this petition. And then the, the last word that comes to us um, in 8.33 that, and again, this is stated uh, repeatedly. And when thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemies because they have sinned against you and shall turn again, again to you and confess your name and pray and make supplication unto you in this house, there's the house, 
uh, that he says, then hear thou in heaven, hearken in heaven. And again, the envisioning of the throne room, uh, that God the Father sits on his throne, Jesus Christ sits at his right hand, the Holy Spirit is present, the four beasts, uh, as they are ascended and fly over above him, crying out, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Uh, the 24 elders are gathered around about him. He is high and exalted, lifted up. I, I, again, this doesn't say in scripture, but my mind is, is that he's up on the stairs and he sits on that platform above where all eyes can see him above as we bow down and go down. And again, the place of heaven, uh, this holy Shekinah where God's glory resides. And here's the glory of it. Here's the preeminence of it. And again, every petition is offered in the heavens. Hebrews chapter 4, that let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace in heaven, that he may hearken to us, that he may make our houses holy, our hearts holy, and all things for his glory. So in these petitions here, we have these holy heart, house, hearken, and heaven. Five of each words found here in 1 Kings 6 through 8, but mainly here in chapter 8. It gives us an emphasis, gives us a prayer guide uh, that we can incorporate into our prayer times throughout this year. And I uh, wanted to pass that along to you that you may use it and that, again, it may bless you as it was open to me uh, as well. Uh, continue to pray. Join our 24-7 prayer chain. Uh, you're desperately needed for that. And again, that we can continue to pray for these spiritual things of our Lord's kingdom, uh, the souls, the spiritual warfare that goes against evil and hell and the prevailing that is necessary for the church today to honor and to glorify our Lord and our King through his Holy Spirit. God bless you and may you continue uh, as uh, we see it in the scriptures in Psalm 109 verse 4. I give myself to prayer. You give yourself to prayer and let us pray one for another. God bless.